Alaska, a frontier. Change. Boom. Bust. Growth, slow but sure. Overpowering. Oil. A pipeline. A bridge across the mighty Yukon. Men where no men stayed before. Hundreds. Thousands. and grandeur of Alaska were once known only to the coastal Eskimos, Indians, and Aleuts, and the Athabascan Indians of the interior. They lived in small family clusters, moving along with the seasons, the runs of salmon, the migration of caribou, and the return of ducks and geese. Much of their time was spent gathering enough food and fuel to last the long, harsh winter. Coastal natives hunted whales, walrus, and seals. The ocean was their richest and most reliable store and provided the basis for their traditional life. But it was also the carrier of far-reaching change. Russian sailing expeditions discovered Alaska in 1741 and returned to make it their colony, bringing tobacco and knives to trade for the pelts of sea otters and seals. More than any other resource, these fur animals, along with the beaver, fox, lynx, and marten, lured men to explore, exploit, and settle Alaska. seekers left its mark. But inaccessibility protected much of the land and thus the wildlife until now. Wildcat drillers on Alaska's north slope struck oil at Prudhoe Bay in 1968. Alaska was thrust into a land use, land ownership debate. The Eskimos, Aleuts, and Indians voiced their ancestral claims to the land. The state government demanded its share of federal lands. And people in the other 49 states expressed concern for the future of Alaska's wildlife and their lands. Action came nationally in 1971 when the U.S. Congress passed the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. Under the act, Alaska Natives can choose and receive title to 40 million acres, or about one-ninth of the state, as part of their ancestral claims to the land. The act also required the Secretary of the Interior to withdraw up to 80 million acres of existing public land for specific consideration as new national wildlife refuges, parks, forests, and wild and scenic rivers for ownership by all Americans. Among those lands withdrawn were prime wildlife areas. Their potential for addition to the National Wildlife Refuge System 
was reviewed by the staff of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Other federal conservation agencies studied these national interest lands. The results led to the Secretary of Interior's specific recommendations to Congress for new or expanded national wildlife refuges. National Parks. National Forests. And wild and scenic rivers in Alaska. The lands included in those recommendations will remain in a special withdrawal category until the Congress acts on the Secretary's proposals or until December 1978. We now have the chance under the Native Claims Settlement Act to protect the land and water living spaces of the millions of birds, fish, and mammals that thrive in the vast wilderness of Alaska. Start with several hundred million shorebirds, add 12 million waterfowl, and multiply by countless warblers and other small birds, and you have summer in Alaska. Coming from the east, west, and gulf coasts, and points in between, they set their compass-like course for Alaska, even before the snow is gone each spring. Flocks that winter on other parts of the National Wildlife Refuge System, such as Blackwater, Aransas, Julie Lake, and Upper Mississippi, will suddenly head north, flying almost non-stop to their traditional Alaska breeding grounds. Joining them are Arctic terns, which fly 10,000 miles from the opposite end of the world, Antarctica. Some plovers cross the Pacific Ocean from China, Australia, and the South Sea Islands. Western sandpipers and others come from Central and South America. in Alaska are prime nesting habitat for great masses of these birds. The yukon Kuskokwim Delta, the Kayakuk region, the Yukon Flats, and the Silowick region. Portions of each are proposed as national wildlife refuges. Dissected by rivers, old oxbows, and ponds, the proposed Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge is more water than land. The tundra underfoot is spongy with moisture, cushioned with the plants and berries eaten by the birds and the people. The 12,000 Eskimo residents of the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta have a special interest in seeing these wildlife resources, so vital in their daily lives, protected for future generations. Farther up the Yukon River is the Kayakuk region, where another national wildlife refuge is proposed. Rivers are the heart of the Kayakuk country. Life flows with them. When winter comes, the beaver and moose remain. Both these animals are important in the lives of the local Athabascan Indians. Farther upstream, at the southward bend of the mighty Yukon, are the Yukon Flats, center of the early interior fur trade. More than 40,000 lakes, ponds, and sloughs catch the rays of the summer sun 24 hours a day. Ducklings and goslings grow rapidly to flight stage by feasting on the flourishing pond weeds and, for protein, on the flourishing mosquitoes. Moose escape the hungry insects by immersing themselves in the shallow lakes where they supplement their diet of willow twigs with water lilies. The 
major concentration area for migratory birds is the land proposed as the Selawak National Wildlife Refuge. Here, on the Arctic Circle, prime habitat for loons, swans, geese, and sandhill cranes spreads inland beyond the expanse of Selawak Lake toward the headwaters of the Selawak River. From clumps of grass and spongy tundra nests hatched thousands of birds each year. Biologists are on the lookout for the Eskimo curlew. These birds once lived within the region, and if any still exist, they may well be found in the proposed refuge. In late summer, snow geese, sandhill cranes, and others that raise their young in Siberia stop to rest and feed in the Selawik lowlands before flying southeast down the North American continent to winter in California and Mexico. Birds are not the only migratory wildlife dependent on Alaska's land and water. Alaska's rivers are the lifelines of millions of fish that migrate from the salt water into freshwater to spawn. Some traveling nearly 2,000 miles up the rivers to the streams of their origin. The salmon are of particular importance to the people along the rivers and at sea. The offspring that migrate down the rivers also sustain the ocean fisheries, so much a part of Alaska's economy. Much of this fishery resource comes from the Iliamna area's network of rivers, streams, and lakes. This area produces the world's largest number of sockeye salmon, averaging over 12 million annually, and offers some of the world's finest sport fishing, especially for rainbow trout. The land protecting the quality of these spawning waters is included in an Iliamna National Resource Range proposed as part of the National Wildlife Refuge System. The range would be jointly administered with the Interior Department's Bureau of Land Management. Another migration phenomenon, caribou on the move. The two largest herds in the state cover thousands of square miles in their yearly wanderings on the North Slope. Migration means life. Inch-high lichens, the diet of the caribou, are quite fragile, taking years to grow. If the herds did not move continually, they would destroy their own food source. Caribou of the porcupine herd migrate between Canada and the United States to satisfy their hunger. The proposed Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, incorporating two additions with the existing Arctic range, will help protect members of this great herd, their calving area on the coastal plain, and the fragile land they depend upon. Immediately to the west of the proposed refuge are the oil fields of Prudhoe Bay. Across the Canadian border to the east is a potential international wildlife range, also flanked by oil fields. In early spring, some polar bears give birth to cubs on the coastal plain of the refuge. After emerging from snow cave dens, the females lead their cubs out onto the Arctic ice pack. Inland, the cliffs of the Brooks Range will soon hold the aries of golden eagles and hawks and of the peregrine falcon, endangered by nesting failures throughout much of its other range. On the opposite end of this chain of mountains, the 240,000 caribou of the Arctic herd, largest in the state, roam across the valleys of the Noatak and into a federal petroleum withdrawal. Some of their wandering is within the proposed Noatak National Arctic Range. This land would become part of the National Wildlife Refuge System 
in joint administration with the Bureau of Land Management. Arctic research will be encouraged on the NOATEC, as well as other activities that do not harm the natural environment. There would be a 20-year moratorium on development within NOATEC. After that time, the U.S. Congress would decide what will take place. Just up the coast from the Noatak, the proposed Chukchi Sea National Wildlife Refuge includes two portions of this peninsula and would protect the nesting area of two to three million marine birds, including horned puffins, murres, and kittiwakes. The Chukchi would be one of five Alaska coastal refuges created or enlarged under this proposal. Together, they stretch along 1,500 miles of Alaska coastline and attempt to protect many of the nesting cliffs and islands used by four to six million seabirds. These areas are also used as holding grounds for such marine mammals as sea lions, walrus, and seals. Both seabirds and marine mammals spend most of their lives at sea where no land acquisition program can protect them. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has also proposed a minimum three-mile jurisdiction offshore from these refuges and plans a seabird research program to learn how man can protect and manage this wildlife resource in its marine environment. This three-mile offshore boundary also applies to the coastal water off the proposed Togiak National Wildlife Refuge. Togiak encompasses representative samples of all Alaskan environments and wildlife. Togiak is an apt summary for all the refuge proposals. Like all the others together, Togiak's values are as varied as the habitats found there. No single one overshadows the others. Secretary of the Interior has recommended to Congress that each of these areas be added to your system of national wildlife refuges. Together, these proposed refuges scan the spectrum of fish and wildlife lands in Alaska. From marine Marshland. To rushing streams. To rocky crags. A little bit of our future lives in each. 